Uh, what's going on, boss? What's up, Papa? Yo, man. Not much, dude. Fucking um, just uh, um, planning this move. I'm moving next weekend. Thanks again, dude, for jumping on this, dude. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to do the thing. I'm trying to get other other musicians and producers on this on this jam and just hear what's going on with people and stuff, you know. Mm, I understand that. Yeah. But um, what's been, what's been going on with you, man? I am moving exactly one week from today, and I'm fucking pumped. And um, we're moving we like, huh? We're like going, going 15 miles down the road, but we're going in the house, like downstairs right now. I can hear like furniture sliding and closet doors slamming and stuff. And I'm sure I'm probably not the best neighbor either with with this thing going on. But um, <laughs> but but we are tr- turning a garage into a studio, though. And that's the big plan, basically. And um, I got like all these crazy drawings and shit of like what we're going to do. Probably can't see it so good on camera, but we're like trying to figure out um how to build these walls like properly to isolate a corner and that's basically um in a short form what's been going on for the past couple weeks i'm getting construction materials how to really actually soundproof and not just like acoustically treat it's like how do we actually figure out the weak points and build something that's going to be like legitimately isolated so um but i got to tear it down in two years so it's also like all right what materials am i okay with throwing away what can i take and resell right And so um, I think the thing is we're going to get good insulation so I can take the insulation and sell it off instead of getting like pink fluffy wall shit and then throwing that stuff away. Um, Because if you get some good insulation, people will buy that stuff, especially if it's like already marketed towards acoustic, you know, building and dense enough to Mm -hmm. where people can repurpose it. It's I think it's worth it. And um yeah and we're like doing like double layers of drywall and then the frame in the center and then double layers on the other side and people are using like green glue to put the two drywalls together but if we're going to tear it down in two years there's no sense in investing in that so that's been basically what's been going down um over the past couple of weeks is like figuring out how to plan that and um yeah that's gonna be mad fun and it's gonna be a new experiment and like how to even frame it and attach it to the wall in case an earthquake happens so that's basically what's been going on with me man and in a nutshell um i haven't even really working on music the past couple weeks i've been like opening projects here and there but i'm really focusing on trying to get them out and like getting this visual art done so that's the name of the game recently man at least in the past two weeks two three weeks or so yeah what about you dude what's going on uh the <clears throat> the past couple of weeks for me have been have been really busy because i'm also back in school um oh wow studying for my digital music tech degree and that's right it's you know the the within the last two weeks i've really learned that you you gotta stay on top of your stuff because if you miss one thing and then you try and catch it up you still have all this other stuff right behind it that require full attention and so you're, you're going to be pulled in like multiple different directions trying to do two things at the same time than just focusing on one task and getting it done so my last two weeks have been me trying to play catch up on a project that i was supposed to send somebody um nothing came so i i have been like really just chipping away at it trying to trying to get that done on top of studying for an exam, on top of uh, creating uh, like analytic mixing logs uh, for another class, uh, as well as learning a bunch of stuff at work and trying to get those things done. And so um, this past week, I actually did a live set recording for a for a show coming up. I don't know when the air date is, but I also had to prepare and, and do that. So it's just been a hectic two weeks for me. Yeah, that sounds um, like your life's really full. Dude, I, and so, you know, I still got stuff to do. Like, I still got that project, <laughs> to be honest. But, like, I was like, I let me rest for, like, a day, and then we'll, we'll, we'll finish it all. But to be honest, probably right after this, I'm going to go finish up that project because I just, I just want to be done with it. I don't want to think about it anymore. Is that project uh, school-related? No. 
Oh, okay, gotcha. It's it's a it, no, it's a collab with somebody, and uh, we okay. had set a deadline, and and I haven't sent it. So, and that's just me being honest. You know, some people are are gonna keep that under wraps, but I'm just like, oh, dude, right. I dude, I don't care. Like, I'm I'm honest. I missed it, and that's I, it's all on me. We're um, human, man, right? Yeah, we're human. And yeah, I exactly. Just, <laughs> I just need to get it done, dude. So you know, I'm low key stressing, but I'm I'm having a good time out there. It's it's a learning experience. I I hadn't fallen behind like this and. A long time, actually. So, you know, it's it, it's a really good reminder. <laughs> Are you able to share the genre style? Maybe not the person, but the style. Oh, it's hard style. Word. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, here, look, look I, I might have been, you know, wanting to take a break and all that stuff, but not. I, I'm not quitting. Like, I just, I, I want to take the time to learn things that, that otherwise I wouldn't have because I was, you know, busy thinking about other things like uh, marketing or, or, or image or branding and all that, you know, stuff uh-huh. that like, I, I was so focused on that instead of doing the one thing that I'd like to do. And the one thing that I was actually getting good at. And the one thing that people say I am good at and just really honing in on, on what I can do and what I can create. And, and I said, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna stop all this. We're gonna stop the social media. We're gonna we're just gonna reset. We're gonna learn. We're gonna dedicate the time solely to making music, and then see where we go from there. Right on, yeah. Because I remember you showing me, you know, kind of some just things on the side and stuff like. And it's kind of good to at least get that um, different style within, and then you go back to like what you already love doing, and you're like, oh shit, man all working on this other stuff just made these projects just that much more book. And like, you know what, in in regards to like forgetting about like the main reason why we're doing this, I'm getting so wrapped up in this construction thing. I'm like, wait, I haven't even opened any music. Like what is this all for music? And that's kind of the one thing, right? Like, don't forget to make music. We can get wrapped up so much in just other technicality stuff. And, um, you know, like you had said, the marketing thing and like, it, it comes back to, don't forget to make music. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I I forgot. I literally forgot to make music. That take it for me. Like, if any uh, anyone watching this that that is like, uh, you know, oh, what is what is Brandon doing? Like, what is KG doing? Why why did he you know go away or things like that? Because like I forgot to make music, and uh, that's what made me really sad, dude. It, it I was the most sad person because I, the I don't know, music just is me. That's, that's what it is. So I I feel you hard on that, man. Right. I mean, you showed me some couple of projects, man. They still sound clean as hell, dude. So, you know what? It, 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 I guess uh, take it from another another producer as well. Like, you you still got the shit, dude, going, man. So I'm trying to not to cuss so bad, but fuck yeah, Brandon. That is awesome. <laughs> you know? Seriously. Um, yeah. And um, so, I mean, uh, I guess even on you know, I was mentioning that second ago of just like the other projects you had sent me outside of hard style. It's like, they're all still super good, dude. It's like, you still have that flow going, you know, from the drum rhythm to the mixing, to the approach and stuff like that, dude. And like the stuff that you're working with just at the pad right there, man. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's, it's doing a lot with, with, with what you got, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I just want to give you mad props on that, man. And what, what kind of, I mean, are you just using those headphones to mix over there? Or like you got little speaker set up. I know you were like doing some cabling and some desk editing the last time I was on a chat with you and, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Well, to be honest here, I'll just show you. Really. So yeah, there we go. So yeah. like I have these little Tannoy reveal 502 sitting That's here right. on the stand. Yeah. And, and I have like, a, they all funnel down here into a basket. Don't, don't mind that marker. And, and the desk is all dirty. I, I need to, I did, I'm tomorrow's my cleaning day, but <laughs> you know, I got the 10 reveal five Oh twos and actually getting my, getting my desk out of the corner. Cause the corner's over there. Uh-huh. I, I put it in the room. I measured it out. Uh, obviously I'm obviously I'm kind of rotated the wrong way. It should be lengthwise, not width wise, but Hey, whatever. Um, yeah. I just wanted to get it out of the corner mm-hmm. and I did. And it, the listening experience through, you know, $200 speakers, like each of these are $200. Uh, the listening experience has changed and I'm like, mm, I can hear the highs a little bit more. I can huh. hear a little bit more uh, of the, the mid range. You know, it's just slightly different. 
And especially having them up on and on little ISO mounts or ISO pads. Uh-huh. Um, and that's something that I couldn't do if the, the desk was in the corner. Interesting. You know what's funny? Actually, the fact that you had, you know, said, you know, about the whole short ways, long ways. I was talking with somebody last couple weeks ago, and he said he did this whole long setup and like put his desk in some way and like he had it in a long way and um he had measured his room and he was getting like a huge like 60 60 hertz dip. And he put it short ways, dude. And like his response is way better, you know? So it's like speaker placement, distance. I mean, really the whole room makes a difference. But I mean, the fact that you're out of the corner, that's cool that you got to, to hear that, man. And oh, um, yeah. and it, it, it can either go like, okay, I know what, what I'm working with. And at least this is better than what I'm doing. Or um, it comes back to like your room can sometimes make or break but then but then again it's like the, if the, the technician knows his tools then it's like you know keep mm -hmm. on working you know what i mean so yeah i was actually looking at those five and five oh twos like back in the day and um i almost got them and i ended up just like keeping with what i had and just moving that around and um yeah those things aren't, aren't they still do, do the deal man and if you know them well it's like fucking more power to you right well to be honest yeah well to be honest like i'm this is the first time i'm like really discovering them because when i bought them well, when i first bought my studio set up like i had uh my my the beginnings of my studio was uh i had a macbook pro uh, -huh. uh i bought those speakers and i ran everything through this 2i2 right here i'm <laughs> i'm never getting rid of this this thing is like <laughs> this thing is staying with me forever they're, they're bulletproof bro uh, you're telling me I <laughs> I was on one one day and uh, I was so mad because this thing just kept going, <laughs> you know, just the, the drivers were or the audio was just like completely crapping out. Uh -huh. And uh, I just got so fed up that I was just like, it's time to get another interface. And I was already recording stuff with the guitar. So I went with a little UA. Uh, they call it the Apollo Solo now. It's the UA Arrow is, is what I have. Uh -huh. but I bought a Thunderbolt three card and, and went with that. But when it got here, I literally took this and I threw it. I said, <laughs> Hey guys out with the old yeet. And you can <laughs> hear it go in the background. And I'm like, <laughs> and uh, I, I kind of felt bad a couple days later. I was just like, did I really just throw this thing? Um, and I plugged it in. This thing still works. Oh yeah, dude. Those things are yeah. rock solid for a hot minute, dude. And for the price, those things, best bang for the buck, man. And there are a couple extra mic pre's, you know, if you're on the go or something, you know? Oh dude, I, I, I told myself and, but that's actually why I bought the, uh, Apollo arrow or the, uh -huh. or the Apollo solo or whatever. It's same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that's the reason why I bought that is because I'm uh, eventually I'm going to get myself a laptop with Thunderbolt three and that's actually going to be my mobile, um, uh, interface. It just means that whenever I upgrade the the main studio or the 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 main base, uh -huh. uh, it's gonna have a it's gonna have one of the bigger um, UA interfaces. Are you moving at all or like staying in the same spot? I'm still staying in the same spot, but if I'm in order for me to do that, like I want a desk that can actually have uh that actually has um rack mounts rack mounts uh inside of it. Like I know output output yeah I know that uh -huh. output actually has one but I, I want something that's easy easy to actually tear down put back together you know just in case i do need to move or something happens i can take it all with me not just like one of those like one piece things um, right so i would i would need to find something like that but i think it would be really cool to just like bolt it like just have it right in front of me and just just have a whole desk i think that'd be pretty cool right no for sure i mean i i there's some gear that i have on the desk over there that i have to get up every time to it and then i <laughs> I kind of wish the same that I can have something that's just in front of me modular and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but I can't win them all sometimes. Can't win them all. So yeah, having that desk right there, that'd be, that'd be so sweet, man. Um, are you going to add treatment to your place? Do you have treatment in your spot right now? I, I, I don't. And mainly because I'm in headphones anyway. And that's gotcha. going back to what I was saying, like with the, the reason why I haven't upgraded my speakers, because I'm just now getting to really know what they can actually do. Like, you know, putting them up on stands, tilting them downwards, having the pads. So that way uh -huh. I can actually get what the speakers sound like, or at least right. in this room. Totally. Um, and until I really know what those can and can't do, I'm not buying anything else. And the majority of my mix downs have been, my points of references have actually been an iPhone, mm -hmm. these DT770s, mm -hmm. um, uh, Pioneer HDJ2000s, mm -hmm. which are in my car. 
uh, and my car itself. Those have been my points of references. And so uh, that's just how I've been mixing. Um, that's a good approach, man. I mean, like yeah. the fact that you're like willing to be like, you know, take that almost strictness in, into the yourself and make, hey, you know what? I want to know actually my tools instead of going on like this audio file fucking rabbit hole hell of like, what am I missing? What am I missing? But really like, what am I supposed to be getting out of these? You know, and just, and like you said, just learning it. And you already are a good engineer. So like the fact that you are really trying to hone in on just those things right there, like tells me that like you already kind of know what you're doing in a way. So it's like, I, I, I admire that, especially with, with, with your already skill set. So yeah, that, 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 comes, that. that actually means a lot coming from me. Cause like, like you're, you're so about it and you're so excited to talk about, you know, audio, audio gear and all that stuff. And that's why like, um, like whenever it comes time to upgrade, like I'm definitely going to ask you, like you're going to be one of the first people that I ask Word. as well as uh talent. You helped out talent actually. And he was just like, yo dude, like I'm looking for no gear. And I'm like, Nope. I'll give, I'll do you a favor right now. I'm going to send you to Jared because he's going to know way more about this stuff than I do. Yeah. He, and I was pumped. I mean, some people can really use it. You know what I mean? And some mm -hmm. people like just necessarily don't need it. I mean, I'm still seeing, like, I saw a video of like Sefa studio, dude. And he's like in like this corner room and he's got a couple of characters case like on a desk with like a big old screen. And dude, it's, it, it still comes back to like, what do you know in, within your own system? Right. And it comes back to your ears. You know, for me, it's like, I kind of wanted to dig a little more and like, and I still find myself like in a point, like, dude, you just got to get used to your tools and understand and go back to referencing, but that referencing mm -hmm. and mixing and mono stuff is just freaking, freaking important. And, um, I don't know why, but only over the past year has that become like so much more prevalent because when I was at that other studio over here down in downtown and like, it was a big ass space and it was a nice room and it was well-treated. And then I finally measured it after like four years of being in there. And I'm like, <laughs> no wonder why this doesn't sound, you know, right. But then again, it's like, it comes back to like, okay, maybe the system was too big for like, for me, you know I mean? Like there's like too much, too much man for this, this little boy. And, um, really uh it's just like that and even when i monitor and monitor on these small guys right here it's like okay it's like if, if if you can get something good to sound good out of these you know from like those headphones to your the five inches to the car to then that's then your phone you know what i mean that's like mm -hmm. that those are the go-to's already usually you know the laptop speakers right you know and so i've just been trying to do that more and more and more because it, it, it ends up being, I, I feel it just ends up being cost effective. You don't need to keep buying things like, oh, these are going to, you know, these are going to have flat response. It's going to tell me everything that I want. And be like, but, but that's, here's the thing. Like chances are people listening to the stuff that you're making anyway, are going to be on a laptop or a phone or a car anyway. Like what is, what is like a, a, a uh, what is a set of Genelex? I don't remember like the 8030Bs that are probably, uh, what, are, what are the 8030Bs? Like a good grand or something 1200 oh, but yeah 1200 like a piece not for two a piece so a 2400 uh, a 2400 dollars set like what is what is that really gonna do for you uh, like what is that really gonna do if you're not referencing on a phone anyway right yeah you know? that's um, true and well, so really quick, like what, 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 when you say like these little guys, like what, what do you, what do you actually oh, have? Oh, the little Genelec. I have the little Genelec. Uh, they're 4020s, but they're the same oh, thing as the 8020s. And, oh. but they just have a different Phoenix connector. They're not an XLR. They're Phoenix. Same, ex same exact driver, same exact tweeter, same exact cabinet, everything, circuitry. Just the only difference is, a, is a, it's a three pin Phoenix. Are you going, to, and that's just connecting to the back of your interface, is, so or, or your, have, your your is it? Are you doing uh, DAC? I have a monitor switcher, so I go from the interface, and then I go um, the RME optical to this this um, shit Bifrost two, and then from the Bifrost, I go XLR out to quarter inch in my. It's a passive three channel three selector um, monitor switch, and then I have options one, two, and three, and they're all quarter inch in ins and outs. So one in, three out, and then the three outs are the Barefoots, the little Genelex, and my headphone amp. And um, so to get to the Genelex, it goes from quarter-inch male. And on the other end, I had to leave it open-ended. And then mm. you just take the Phoenix and you screw. It's like those that little green connector. No, I, I know. I actually yeah, have, yeah. I've, I've actually 
uh, made a couple of connections and and work with uh, Tascam. Uh, the uh, what is it? The MX8A is what? what it is. It's a it's a digital mixer from Tascam, but like oh. well, it has a bunch of Phoenix connections on the on the back it, of it. So it's right on a mixer, that. huh? Huh? On a mixer? Uh, it's it's a it's a little rack mount unit, but it's it's a digital mixer. So it's just the box that holds all the processing. You can plug your ins and outs, but the entire interface is digital. So you log into it via an IP oh. address, and you and you work through it that way. Interesting. Um, huh. You'll you'll do more of that through like you'll use that device more so for like broadcasting and things like that. Not so much in a studio environment. You'd rather you know rather just use a physical console than anything else. But there are people that use it. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. No, I, I haven't seen so much of the task and stuff in the live environment. They were using like the Yamahas and it was mostly mm. Yamahas. I got to work with in a couple of sound crafts, even the X32 and stuff, but I, that's cool. IP mixer, huh? huh? Interesting. That's cool. But no, just, um, wait, just wait till you start using Dante in your studio. That that's where it's going to start getting real. You fun. know, so my dad, he's moving to the East coast, dude. And like they, we, before, you know, he was pricing out building a house from scratch and he's like, I want to build a separate studio. And like, long story short, it got way too expensive, but we were like trying to figure out like, okay, building a control room. Like it, it, it was crazy. I mean, like this whole hexagon shape, three ISO booths, tracking room, how to get the tracking room, like to a 20 foot zoom. We like, we drew all this on paper and he wanted these, like, I want it on the network. And so like, you know, we had either looked at options of like AVB, but AVB boxes only go to 48 K and um, you're limited to only AVB devices. And on Dante, mm-hmm. it's like you, you can use a gigabit switch, right? And so, um, yeah. yeah, you kind of know that whole drill. But anyhow, um, and it's expensive, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's super expensive. So it's like, dude, I mean, like, but then again, so is like running analog cables through the walls and like to patches within the walls. So, but in the long run, it's like, you know, the future's already here. So, um mm. Yeah, that's it's that that is a whole different world in itself. And then getting like 96k stage boxes that actually go up to that sample rate, and of course, like mm-hmm. an interface that can handle all that data. Uh-huh. So, and then trying to do that, you know, like on a on a home, like not even like we're we're making money off of this thing kind of level. So let's invest in this shit. You know, it's it's wild. It, that stuff's that focus right red stuff is wild, wild, wild. Uh, yeah, the red net. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's. Uh, uh, that's actually an interface that I really, I'm not going to buy it right now, but that's, uh-huh. that's an interface that I'm looking at. Really? Huh? Yeah. I want, I want, I want to go Dante in the, in the studio. I want to have everything that worked. Cause I, the, cause the one thing working in, in, in event services is that, you know, with all the video protocols, audio protocols, lighting as well, mm-hmm. all of them have one common connection, which is the RJ 45 or the ethernet cable or internet cable. Uh, this is some people say, and and uh, really, all you would have like if you can just connect everything through one cable, you know, you don't have to sit there and go buy DMX or you don't have to sit there and go buy XLR or or HDMI display port things like that. No, while that is better, you know, if I can just deal with one cable and just send it all through like an entire network and just manage it through that, and then right. I'd rather do that. But that's and you can run it for days the, too, the pain in the Mm-hmm. But it, I, I think that's more of a pain in the butt to set up initially than it is to just you know give everything its own, uh, give everything its own like connection. True, because then you're routing to multiple devices and like you know, and if you have anything on a network, then it's just software control from there, right? And so, right for the most part, like at well, least the- with the video and the lighting, and unless you have boards that are dedicated for. It, that kind of, I mean, I don't know the whole video well, network side. I understand the lighting and the audio side, but not so much the video side with network. I'm, I'm still learning about video. I don't know too much about like being able to send like video through the uh, video protocols through like the internet or anything like that. I'm, I'm learning all of that. I, I'm happy where I work because I get to learn all of that. That's right. it's really fun. Yeah. That's a whole different side of things. And I'm like, there's a lot here. But, you know, it's it, that's going to take time. But as I slowly, you know, every day I go back and learn more about it, I'm like, oh, I'm getting these ideas. Like, ooh, I can do that. Oh, I easily just, that's it. Okay. Yeah, you right. know, just start connecting the dots together. And so, that's uh, cool, know, man. I'm, I'm having a blast. 
Yeah, no, totally. I mean, and, and, and truthfully, that almost like can one keep you up with the times and two, like you can apply that knowledge like in environments like the home studio to like where you can potentially implement this for the future, right? For your own self, like I already know how to do this. What's the best way I, I could do this with the knowledge I already know while still keeping up with the times and stuff like that. But um, but with if you try to do and network at home, like you would have to have well, they don't have network based monitors. Um, you would still have to have analog outs too. I don't know about that. I don't think anything Dante is they, certified or it yet. Nothing on the higher end, I don't think, at least. Nothing that I've seen. I, I can't so. I, I can't go out of screen right now, but I I'm I'm uh, I'll look it up later, but I I think I remember somebody a friend of mine telling me that I think there are IP based monitors. Studio monitors? Because they oh studio I don't know about studio monitors, but there would be Oh you think I was talking about uh, screens, right? IP based monitors like that. No, no, they they would use no 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 monitors like audio. Oh. Um uh, because I think they use those at like amusement parks for when you when you're when you're deploying them, or and some places would use them in churches. I let me find out find out more about that because I'm pretty sure they do. Like, there's no way that they wouldn't, especially if the, you have all these different protocols like AES67, AVB, Dante, and there are a couple more that I can't remember off the top of my head. But like, there's yeah, you, you could totally do it, I'm sure. Yeah, I should have clarified and, and said for studio use. I have seen some mm. network-based speaker systems. I know Meyer does that, does have a couple of different systems that they build that are actually true Dante certified, get on a network and stuff like that. So it is out there, it exists and stuff like that. And that's a good example of amusement parks, huh? <laughs> totally. I mean, but that's that's just well, the whole yeah, world yeah. and I'm, that's a little out of my... Out of my my price range, boy. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm not trying yeah. to buy any speakers for music. No, no, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm pretty like content where I'm at with uh, the gear that I have and stuff like that. And I mean, these Jennies are like. There's a reason why these little Jennies are kind of in a lot of. I mean, from what I've seen and in my experience listening and stuff like that in hard dance studios, because it's the way they translate that, that lower mid upper bass, like 100 to like 350. It just, things just poke out, man. Like I tried playing some, like I got my dad, the um, 40 thirties. Cause I found a steal on them on offer up for like 350 a pair. And um, what? yeah, but they're the, the Phoenix versions again. Right. They were asking for, I was like, yo dude, I'll give you 350. Just like, I don't think they're going to say yes. If they don't, I won't get mad. And they're like, all right, that's cool. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I got him for my pops. And I was like, you know, he's trying to do mixing some country music and like rock and blues and that kind of stuff. And it's a different it's a different sounding speaker, man, completely. You know, and then I played like, you know, some dance music on him in the same space. And it's like, wow, I can really see why they're definitely a more um, or at least just in my listening opinion that like. They work well for hard dance. My Facebook is going off, man. I, I can't really quote. You know, you're a popular Stand man by. today, dude. <laughs> it's probably one person. Uh, it's, 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 all, it's all good. It's there we go. At all. Close. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been able to listen to General X. I just, I don't know. I haven't been able, you know, I haven't been able to try them at least in a whole year because, you know, you can't really go anywhere. Um, and you know, when you go to the guitar center and things like that, it's not like they oh, actually no, they they did at one point, but like at least the times that I went, they were like, Oh, you can't really listen to how these sound right now. And I'm like, Why not? <laughs> really, huh? Uh, this whole COVID thing, huh? Yeah, but huh, you know, I'm I the one speaker that I really want to listen to, and it, it, that apparently is just a really good all around speaker is the HS8. Hey, Todd, they're big. Well, I, you know, I might not go with the eights. I might go fives, maybe sixes, or, or are they sevens? sevens? Right. I think, yeah, there's five and like six and a half. They call them the sevens, though. But that's yes. like, yeah. I'll probably go sevens if uh, for like a good middle ground. Um, but, you know, I really want to see how that speaker sounds on its own. Uh, because, it, it, I don't know, just a lot of people from EDM producers to like pop to to rock and country like the hs8s are kind of the 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 speaker 
they are a good translator for sure. You know, that paper cone style and stuff like that is, mm. is it definitely does have its, its, its certain sound, but it, it does translate information really well and stuff like that. Their rear porter, they know from what I know and have seen and have heard that like just placement is everything with them. And so you got to um, be really specific with them in a way, or you just got to play around with it in your room and just like really move them around. Like right now, these speakers are like in dead ass corner. They're wider than like my distance, but that seems to be like the most even response when I had measured it. And like, truthfully, like the kick and bass relationship kind of just changed the game. And I'm able to tell like low mid phase and stuff like that. If it's like too wide or just not, if it's sloppy or like lopsided and stuff. So mm -hmm. it does help. And I think it translates, you know, like the translating is getting totally better and stuff. So like, placement is is major major and these, major, these major. even uh i mean i read the manual about like the little gens is that you can even put them up you could put they, they say you could put them up to the wall up to 60 centimeters and like from 60 centimeters to like three feet i know i went from metrics to usa it don't matter <laughs> um that's when it like it's like a no-go zone and then like past three feet it's like oh cool so they're designed, I guess, to be next to a wall. So um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know the logic behind it, but hey, you know what? And truthfully, I I almost was um, those ones you have right there and stuff like that compared to like everything else, the KRKs of the time. I mean, they have the Gen 4s. My roommate's got the Gen 4s, <laughs> you know, but um, those things hold their ground, man. And it's for the deal you can get them, man. I mean, um, yeah, I would I would op those at, at anything because I've heard like the Personas Aries and stuff. They're they're good mids, but like the treble is just like brittle and washy. Mm. And um it seemed just like those were a little more clear, especially because I just like the the driver exposed to it and stuff like that. Maybe that's just like a visual like perception thing if I had to close my eyes and then listen to them. But um no, they seem like a good contender, man, for sure. So Hold on to those bad boys as long as you can. I definitely will. You know, um, it was really hard because these were, these were actually my first set of monitors. Uh -huh. And so I was like, do I go with these? Do I, and, you know, obviously all the hard style kids are going to be like, oh, get KRKs, get KRKs, you know, it just because it just had a good low end response. Apparently that's what KRK does. I don't know. I've never really liked the sound of them. Yeah, I wasn't too much of a fan either. They, a little scoopy. They are very scoopy. Like it's either, uh, yeah, it's just low end and then some highs. And like, where's my mid range? Mm, you don't need that. Uh, yeah, I do. Plus, those are front ported too, right? Uh, the KRKs, yes. I mean, the ones you have, the the oh, wheels, yes. yes. Yeah, that makes uh, they're, you know, they're, easier for they're at the bottom. The wall. I, you know, I don't too. Yeah, true. Um. You know, I actually haven't really. That's something that I didn't pay attention to when it came to monitors for the longest mm -hmm. time was the porting. Because to be honest, I didn't really know what porting was for the longest time. And I was just like, why is there a hole there? You don't really need. Why does this one have it and that one doesn't? And I realized it's because it's pushing air to give the give the perception of having more bass. That's, right. That's, that's that's what it's for. It's the. Uh huh. Um, and when I found that out, I was just like, oh. Gotcha. Um, I, I stuffed socks in the back of these, like I had these little three inch Mackies mm -hmm. and they were good, small little B sets for the time. And I'd no, I'd stuffed Kleenex tissues in them. Well, and, and uh, you know what, that, that, that helped for what they needed because they were against the wall and it was just like way too boomy for the size that they're supposed to be and supposed to spit out. And uh, yeah, I've heard of people putting, but then again, you're like creating so much heat inside because that, acoustical energy is turning into like real heat inside there so i mean yeah. i don't know it could be i mean on a bigger speaker on a sub i tried to do that to my sub one time and i was like fuck dude i don't know this is probably not a good idea so i took them out so it's just <laughs> that's real heat going on man i mean that's that's true burning circuitry or whatever man things are getting hot in there but anyhow yeah that's uh i don't know good stuff though man you like the space that you're in? I mean, you like that whole move though from the corner to the to the straight spot? Oh, dude, it's uh, yeah. And to be honest, it's it's kind of because my bed used to live like if it were everything like the uh, computer over the, in the corner. Uh -huh. Where the desk is, my guitar, that's actually where my bed was. So uh, I was just like, 
if I move, I did a whole day of rearranging. Like, uh, there's a black dresser that's not up against. It, it was up against the wall, flush. And then I said, okay, let's let's rotate it to give myself a little bit more room to put the desk, and move the bed all the way to the corner. Uh-huh. And in doing so, whenever I walk in, it's just like it, it starts giving me a little bit more of a vibe of this is a dedicated space for music, not just like it's my room. It's this is slowly becoming a workspace. Uh, and I, I've liked it ever since uh, I, I did that. Uh huh. Um, right. I like it a lot, actually. That's cool. Yeah, man. I mean, I I can't even suggest for you to set it, put up acoustic treatment because you already kind of already halfway know what you're doing in your in your workflow anyway. Mm. Especially with like what you've like sent me and shit like that, dude. And like the fact that you're still pumping out good shit. So like, um, there's like only a select you know yeah i don't know maybe give it a shot dude i mean like i just helped somebody like yo dude you got a hundred bucks to spend go to home depot get yourself a 12 pack of some fucking safe and sound and get some lumber dude and you can build yourself like 12 panels so i'll i'll i definitely will give that a try like i wouldn't mind hanging something up like instead of having like a this this crooked (laughs) this crooked ass picture (laughs) right here um you know like fill that with panels i don't know uh i i've been I've been meaning to try it. Maybe put some like base straps in the corner. Dude, this know. stuff right here, this gray shit is landscape fabric. And you what? can get a roll of 50 foot of that stuff for like, I don't know, $25. Because I've gotten like all this stuff at the fabric store and gotten all fancy and stuff. And it's like not even matching black. And truthfully, like sometimes they run out of like good fabric that's like porous enough. And the landscape fabric, dude, I mean, it's like meant for water to drip through there. You know, I can see through the fabric, but it's like not like so like detrimental where like I think I'm breathing it, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice. And it doesn't like tear. They have like, you know, a couple of different grades, but fucking 50 foot roll for um, 25 bucks. That's that's what 50 divided by three. Well, that's a little hard. Three point. I, I can't even do the math on that. Uh, 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 Let's do 60 divided by three is 20. So that's. 20 yards right for 60 feet so it's like 16.6667 yards somewhere around there for 25 bucks it's like less like a dollar 50 less than a dollar 50 a yard which is pretty good i mean this some of the fabric was like six bucks a yard like this burlap stuff so anyhow that's just a little food for thought in case you ever do decide to to go that route but uh you know to be honest i think i will i i i I think i might why not? No, I don't. I don't know how good it would do because because the freeway is literally like right there. Like you, literally, I literally poke out my head on the window. I was just like, look, there are cars, and you know. you'd be surprised, man. I mean, especially like that rear wall behind you. Yeah. And um, I mean, you have a pretty wide already like space. So like that rear wall, and then behind the speakers, you would notice like, oh wow, these speakers are kind of talking to me a little more, you know. And it's not like you know you're breaking the bank building whole kinds of base traps and stuff. And truthfully, I saw some dude wrap that fabric i mean wrap the panels just the insulation and they're kind of rigid enough you know but they're like three inches thick where they it's like it's like a loaf of bread texture if you wrap it in fabric and then put like a fat piece of cardboard in the back and just safety pin it dude that and then he just like set them he he set them like against his wall and kind of stacked them but he had like some wood framing and stuff like that to anyhow that's possible too you know if you don't want to do the whole saw and cutting and all kinds of stuff it's possible you know and get some velcro because those things are like you know maybe four pounds you know and you get some heavy velcro so you don't have to put holes in the wall i mean there's there's plenty of ways to skin the cat and uh yeah you'd be surprised mine but anyhow that's just uh i don't know a little fun for anybody who's listening and wants to build a project man um yeah no, man. I mean, you keep you mentioned like your guitar and stuff a couple of times. I mean, like you've been using that more in your in your tracks, right? I, I know you showed me a couple of clips. I'm like, dude, this is sick. Even in that, that BassCon live stream, dude, you busted that out live right then and there going into an interface on a laptop with like basic effects, dude, in-house effects. And and it was in sync. And uh, yeah. So you've been recording with that more. Yeah, I, I have been. I actually have. I actually have this bad boy right here. I love this yeah, thing. Yeah, buddy. I love this thing so much. And and I so I bought this. This is a jam stick, uh, studio uh, MIDI uh, MIDI guitar. Huh? Uh, yeah, dude. So is it? What's the? Is it USB? 
It's a USB-C, so you can connect to that no way for a MIDI, or, or you can literally do a TRS to five pin DIN. Oh, okay. For like actual MIDI connection. Uh huh. So, and so when I was at NAM, uh, 2020, uh, 2020 NAM before you know everything shut down, uh -huh. I was walking on the floor, and I promised myself I wouldn't buy anything, but you know that doesn't happen. Uh, and so well, I saw this because, and I knew what Jamstick was, and I saw I was like, what is this? I know, yeah, I I knew that they were making a twelve fret version before, but they scrapped it, and so I came up here. They had a demo, and I was just they were like, "Yo, go ahead, try it." I played a power chord, like an E minor, and they had just Serum loaded up, and it's in it patch. And as soon as I heard like a power chord full of saws, oh, dude, I had the fattest smile on my face. No kidding! And I knew wow. immediately I am buying this. Damn, uh, that's kind of cool, actually. So even if it's not recording, uh, it's been uh, it's it's been using that in my productions to play some of my melodies, and that has actually helped me come up with some interesting melodies as well. But huh. um, yeah, I've I've been recording a lot more uh, guitar, is something that I've played for quite some time, and I stopped for a long, long, long time. But I I really missed it, and so now that I actually have. Uh, uh, gear to do more recording, you know, uh, now I'm learning that side uh, of playing guitar, which is okay. And it helps me with engineering, which is how do you make a guitar sound big and full? How do you get the most out of, out of a take? Like what processing do you do? Like what's the, what, what how do you dial in the compression settings uh, to, you know, to help that guitar stand out more on the mix and not just sound like, you know, it's a, just a thin uh, direct input recording. You know what I mean? Because a lot of the time, these guitars aren't aren't DI'd. They're they're you place your mic in front of the cab uh, of an app or or anything like that, and and do it that way. But I don't quite have that luxury uh, because I don't have uh, I don't have a Marshall amp or anything like I'm using through UA. So all of it's DI, and it just gives this it gives a different sound to it. You know. So UA has their own kind of modeling or di options explain that a little more I, I remember you mentioned one time but try to explain the signal flow so what's really amazing about universal audio and the reason why i built in uh, bought into it is uh -huh. because they actually work with these companies like marshall and marshall's known for their guitar amps and and uh guitar effects at, or more so their amps um the what is it the one that I use a lot is the Marshall. Is it the twenty five fifty five? I think it is. I let me let me double check that really quick because I actually have it loaded up right now. Uh, it is the yeah the twenty five fifty five. Word. Um, and so they work with Marshall to to create an emulation. It's just like what Waves does with their plugin. You know, you have the Poltec EQ, like a physical piece of hardware, uh, and Waves recreated. I don't remember what they called it. Uh, and you have, you know, everybody's emulation of the um, 1176 and the uh, LA-2A compressors. Universal Audio also has that. But also, Universal Audio makes a physical version of the 1176 and right. LA-2A. I, I will be buying one at some point wow um i i want it i want it those are two fantastic fantastic compressors um or limiting amplifiers um, oh yeah same same lingo man right um but uh yeah so they they work with uh they they create a lot of emulations of all of these hardwares, uh, like they have the Neve preamps as well, or Neve, Nave, Neve, Neve. preamps. Yeah. Uh, they have the um, SSL channel strips uh, uh, emulations as well. And so it's really good. And that's why I bought into them. And so uh, that that's what I've been doing. And they have this thing called Unison where you plug it in and it'll try and recreate as best as it can one for one uh, the the exact sound as if you were plugging into a real like twenty five fifty five and uh, so I've been I'm just been working with that a lot more but Word. if there's if there's still that sound that you can tell that it's plugged in digitally and it's just going straight into your DAW it doesn't sound like it's actually being recorded through a microphone it doesn't have that sound signature like you know recording through a uh, 
what is it, the U87 or uh, a 7B or anything like that. Like you don't have that sound signature, so. Gotcha, right. And then plus the room you're in too, right? You know, that with, with the, where, whatever room the amp is in rather. Right. So all those extra variables and stuff like that. But yeah, um, are you doing other processing on top of like the, the, the amp and the pre? That's what the jam stick too, right? You're talking about? Uh, it's with the jam stick or or that that red one sitting behind me as well. Gotcha. That's a, what is that? That's a Fender Squire. The Squire is their, I guess, lower end line. Uh-huh. I've been I've been thinking about maybe getting a, a Stratocaster or maybe even a Telecaster. I kind of want a Telecaster. I like I like how bright those sound and twangy they sound. So guitars yeah. are a little outside of my. They're a little woo. For my guitars room, are a whole my roommate, of definitely. Guitars are a whole other rabbit hole. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I bet. I, I uh, can't even. But the the processing on a guitar, like I, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what guitarists put on their guitars. Not so much the engineers, but like the the guitarists themselves, because they have a bunch of pedals and they know exactly what their sound is. And you know, pedals are a whole other thing. You know, <laughs> that, those are just distortion units with like you know a kill switch or a foot switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's your bypass off and on, but they all have their own specific sound, and, and I just don't know what what sounds are out there for guitar specifically. I don't know right. really what they look for, other than like here's distortion. So uh, that that much I'm still learning. Right, and there's there's a few like you know plugin that make like pedal chains and stuff. Like I know Native Instruments has one, Slate Digital has one, IK Multimedia has one. What is it like? Ni does guitar rig. Slate mm. does uh, S rack or I, I I totally forget. I don't even use it. Um, and then IK Multimedia has like their Amplitube. I've heard good things about them. I u- I've used the Native Instruments one before, and I'm like, oh shit, this sounds actually pretty badass. But um, yeah, that is a whole other ball game in its own, especially when you're dealing with the, the hard, the real hardware versions, and then talking about good cabling for that too. That even plays a big part too. And um, yeah, that's, that's that's just another rabbit hole for sure. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh man, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, that's a lot of info for the night. I'm I'm getting the. Uh, I'm getting quite quite full. I I understand that, dude. Yeah, I, I kind of talked to you off there just a little bit, but you know, nah, it's okay. Things. It's okay, dude. I mean, dude, you got the you at least got the home rig going. You know what I mean? And that's what's up, mm-hmm. dude. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get on chats with people. You know what I mean? And just hear what's going mm-hmm. on and hear what kind of music they're doing. I'll probably even touch base with some people I started this in the begin. You know, begin with like six eight months down the line. Who knows? But I'm having mad fun with this and just hearing what other people are doing and hearing the passion that they have behind it. You know, that's really like what I've been fucking digging about this is I get to hear other people's just passion behind that creative process. And sometimes it gets them back into gear. of Like, you know, I'm talking about it. Now I'm going to get back into it. And yeah, I mean, just like this, you mm-hmm. know, I've worked on a project once the past two weeks. Now I'm just like, you know what? I got to put my money where my mouth is and I might open a project tonight. So yeah dude all right so um we had fucking brandon iwahashi aka kg on it i am the buckness this is another episode of audio talks brandon thank you so much you have a lovely rest of your evening man you too man definitely hit me up anytime okay